Today on an all new Dr. Phil, viewers call them infuriating. You have the audacity to write me this email? I'm offended by this. Grow a spy. They got daddy wrapped around their little finger. True? Very true. Clueless. I don't believe you got any more idea than a goose what to do. Dr. Phil's most frustrating parents. The girls are doing good at home. Are back. Did she scream at you and attack you? She did. When I That's what me. you call the girls are doing no. pretty good. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are we ready in the booth? Let's do it. Go, Dr. Phil. Well, we have received hundreds and hundreds of message board postings, emails, and letters about my next guest. Now, here are just a few responses. I was so angry, I was throwing things at my television. This was the most infuriating show I have ever watched. This might be the first time I have actually yelled at my TV screen. Those aren't all from the same person. It was painful to watch. These parents are absolutely clueless. They need to go into a backbone program and grow a spine. Well, the guest, just referred to as clueless and spineless, are back. I'm talking about Kimberly and David, who are struggling to raise rebellious teen daughters. Here's a look at what's happened so far. Our kids are out of control. Elena is my 14-year-old. Elena is under house arrest. My mom called the cops on me twice. I wound up in juvenile detention center. I don't really care about getting caught. Do you do drugs? Not that much. You found her so drunk, she could barely stand. It was horrible. She scared me so much. Alexis is my 16-year-old. Her trouble comes from traffic violations. My husband, David, will take her car keys away, but Alexis always gets them back within a day or two. Did you demand a car in exchange for coming on the show? I just said they're not getting me one unless they come on. Did you fake a pregnancy? No. Did you test positive? Yes. They just went away? Neither one of you are drinking age. Both of you drink. Neither one of you have prescriptions to be taken a medication. They know how to work with me. I'm a victim of being manipulated by a bunch of little girls. I don't care how much you want to feel light. Your job is for them to not wake up dead. You have a crisis situation on your hands. This is something that calls for immediate and dramatic intervention. When we got back from the show, it was a lot worse than before. The girls are at a point of no return. This isn't going to get any better if we don't do something radical. Did you buy her a car? I, I did. You did. You bought that disrespectful, rebellious child a car. That is insanity of the highest order. When Elena first arrived here, she was very resistant. I was furious, like I hate everyone. And she really turned and made some major progress. In order to be successful with my parents when I go home, I need to help them to be more strict with us and have consequences for our actions. You come to visit and in your infinite wisdom, you broke this rule, you left Alexis alone. You dyed her hair, you gave her makeup, you let them use the cell phone. Let them use the computer and Facebook. You let her contact her ex-boyfriend that she was drinking and running with. We got like 250 people in the audience here. Why are they moaning? No, I mean, I didn't cue them. I didn't, I didn't I like they... flash the moan button. Okay. Why are... I just felt horrible because. Do Here's a news just... flash. This ain't about you. When you were making the rules and decisions, these girls were absolute train wreck disasters. See, when we turned them over to professionals, they had them moving in the right direction. I, I, should I go on? <laughs> we're coming up to deal with the question, are these girls ready to come home? And the real question is going to be, is home ready for them? I think you two don't have a clue. Clearly, I have been exasperated with the decisions and the directions these parents are taking. 
and it's not getting any better in my view. The last time they were on the show, Elena was doing well at Turnabout Ranch, but Alexis was not making as much progress. Against all my recommendations, David let the girls come home from the ranch, even though Kimberly wanted them to go straight to the boarding school. Now, these parents are at complete odds. Before I talk to Mom Kimberly, here's how Alexis told us she's doing. The ranch really changed the girls. They made complete U-turns. Well, at first, I didn't want to go to Turnabout Ranch. I hated it. Having no privileges and having to earn everything you get, having to be in a totally different place where I've never been before and not knowing anybody. It got a lot better after a while. I feel like it was good to get away from some things at home that were going on, like the things I was doing wrong, and see what I need to work on. I used to judge people a lot. And my relationship with my parents is a lot better, and I know myself a lot better. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, and I haven't drank at all. I learned that I'm very codependent on my mom and rely on her for a lot of things, but I learned that I can be more mature and do things on my own. I had to grow up a lot. I am really proud of myself for a lot of the stuff I've accomplished and overcame. That sweet facade turned very ugly shortly after our cameras shut down. Take a look. Went to the gym, I left my phone here, and Alexis must have my password to my phone. And she was reading my messages to David and saw that something about her going to boarding school. She just got very upset. She was just so mad. She was like, I can't stay with you. I'm gonna end up hurting you, I'm gonna kill you. She was going crazy on me and kicking me and hitting me and throwing things at me. And she hasn't gotten this bad in a while. I just feel hopeless now. I mean, I tried, but you can only do so much. Well, I have Kimberly out here on her own because I want to get her take on recent events before I bring David out. You guys flew in mm -hmm. to do the show. You brought her with you, mm -hmm. Alexis with you, because you wanted my help in taking a second attempt to get her to go to boarding school. Mm -hmm. We already talked about it. Everybody agreed to do it. Yep. And we had the plan. It was all set up. Why didn't she go? Well, when we were at the camp, the counselor had pulled David aside after our session and said, the girls really need you, David. They really need you. And I think David took that like, I just need to take them home. So at that moment, he just decided I'm taking them home. Well, I've talked to that counselor, actually. We have a letter from him, and we're going to talk about that, because that ain't what he said. Okay. Uh, that's not what he told David, and he was very clear about that, and he's very clear about it today. They didn't go directly to the boarding school. They went home. Mm -hmm. My position was that if that was what happened, that it would be a complete train wreck. I was very upset at the ranch, because I really wanted them to go. So I was just crying and begging David to please take the advice of the counselors, but he had his mind made up. You know, the girls are doing good at home, but David and I just, we have different parenting styles, and it's just... Well, what do you mean they're doing good at home? Uh, well, I mean, Elena not... said there was so much tension and pressure. She wanted to go to boarding school, asked to be put there, and is gone. Alexis has separated you yeah. from David. She's played the two of you off against mm -hmm. each other. You tell her one thing, 8 o'clock curfew, be here, do what you're supposed to do. She goes behind your back, gets a hold of David. David extends it to 12 o'clock, doesn't even tell you. Then she stays out all night. And then when she was here for the show on Saturday, didn't she physically attack you? She did. In the lobby of the hotel, did she yell at you, scream at you, and physically attack you? She... She did. When I, let me go. That's what you call the girls are doing no, pretty good. What I mean by the girls are doing good is that they're not drinking or doing drugs. That's what I meant. The other part, no, it's not good. The manipulation is still there on Alexis's part, big time. Big time. Now, Alexis threatened not to do the show unless, unless we flew her boyfriend out here. Do y'all go, like, to diva school or something? No. <laughs> no, I told her absolutely not. He's not part of this. And then she threatened to never speak to you again if you did come on the show. Yeah. Because you got to understand, I'm her worst nightmare, right? Yeah, you are. Because I, I don't buy any of her yeah. crap at all. Mm -hmm. I don't believe anything that she says. I don't buy into the manipulations. And I'm telling her parents that she is out of control and that you need to get her under control yes. before it's too late. So she needs to get rid of me. Very disrespectfully, she got your cell phone. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. got your password, got into your cell phone, mm -hmm. and read your text messages between you and your husband, mm -hmm. where you were talking about, look, we really need to get behind this boarding school plan. Mm -hmm. Dr. Phil was right. She shouldn't have come home. Okay. She saw that. She freaked. Okay, here's this guy again. Oh, Baldy messing up my game. <laughs> so she pitches a fit, attacks you, yells, screams. So you finally said, fine, go home. It's hard to sit there and take somebody verbally abusing you and you're stuck in a hotel room right. and kicking your suitcases and hitting you and telling you they hate you. And I wish I'd have been a fly on the wall because I tell you what, the minute she put her hands on you, I'd have called the cops, I'd have had her locked up and put in jail and let her throw her tantrum in jail. That's what I'd have done. You do not allow somebody to violate your body. That is not okay. People don't hit you, they don't kick you, particularly your child. Now, I don't, you know, I don't want to put any child in jail, mm -hmm. but if they want to ramp it up and, and just you know, see how high the ante will go, then you know, I'll call that bluff. I'm curious to know what you guys at, at home think about certain things. I want you to go to drphil.com right now and answer this question. Is the current generation less respectful of parental authority than your generation was? What do you guys say yes. in the audience? Yes. Yeah. Well, next, I'm going to ask David to come out and hear his side of the story. I do not believe that you reward bad behavior. I don't think parents should reward bad behavior. I don't think I should reward bad behavior. And i got to tell you, I'm about ready to stop rewarding bad behavior myself. We'll be right back. When we brought him home, Kimberly's approach was to not let them go anywhere. They don't really have very many privileges, if any. Because you're afraid they're going to do something wrong, you don't go overboard in trying to set up rules so they just don't have any life at all. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. 911, what's your emergency? I just killed my husband. A life of fear. This is a woman that has been abused. A crime of passion. I just picked up the gun and I shot him. The evidence points to self-defense. He said he told you he was going to kill the kids before he killed you. But there's a shocking twist. When I saw premeditated, my jaw dropped. She's charged with first-degree murder? That's tomorrow. David still gets manipulated. He just wants to make everybody happy. I just don't know if he has it in him to be the strict disciplinarian. I think that they have a better chance away from him because he enables them too much. I have given him an ultimatum because I'm like, our kids need help and I feel like you're getting in the way of it and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. You know, this is it. I, this is my last chance to get them help and they're getting it whether you like it or not. Well, that was Kimberly who says she will get help for her daughters with or without her husband David's help. But first, here's what David had to say about his last minute decision to bring the girls home from Turnabout Ranch instead of sending them straight to the boarding school. They said at the ranch, if you have a good program at home, then the girls should go there. I was outside with the girls. I went in there to see what was going on. Kimberly's crying, and she said, oh, they said they need to go away at a boarding school. We'd already told them they were going home. I would like to have them at home anyway, so I bought into that. We made that decision. We're going to stick with it. They're going to be gone soon, and I don't want to miss these next couple of years where they aren't around to do things with me. When we brought them home, Kimberly's approach was to not let them go anywhere. They don't really have very many privileges, if any. I'm a little more liberal than where Kimberly is about whether they could have a friend over or go out and do anything. I think she makes it more oppressive than it has to be. Kimberly would like to have 50 rules instead of four. Because you're afraid.